Good morning, everybody. So I want to discuss really some of my own personal experiences with uh, Cardamax. It's a new product that I've been using over the last year. And overall, I've got to say I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I have no disclosures re relevant to this uh, talk. Um, so hyaline articular cartilage, we know, is a very well-defined structured um, uh, substance. The superficial zone, we have the collagen fibers uh, lined up uh, parallel to the joint surface to help resist the uh, shear forces. We then go through the transitional zone where they're more randomly orientated and then the deep zone where they're perpendicular and that's where most of the fluid is kept in. Uh, the proteoglygans keep it there. They're very hydrophilic and that helps uh, resist uh, compressive loads. But the cartilage in the uh, ankle is very different from that of the knee and because the, knee, uh, uh, the ankle is a very highly congruent joint. But, but just to talk about the cartilage structure itself as well as the um, uh, extracellular matrix, which we spoke about has the type 2 collagen and the proteoglycans that hold the fluid, it has chondrocytes. The difficulty in the problem, unlike many other tissues throughout the body, is that the chondrocytes are trapped within the uh, extracellular matrix. So when there's a cartilage damage somewhere, they can't move over, they cannot migrate, they cannot help uh, heal the tissue. So when there is trauma done to the cartilage, it does not have the ability to repair. As Dr. Kennedy alluded to, there's approximately 30,000 ankle sprains every day somewhere across the country. And up to 60% of these will have some element of chondral or osteochondral trauma. The difficulty is what do we do when it gets to the point that it's symptomatic? Certainly some osteochondral lesions may not be symptomatic, but a significant proportion are, and non-operative treatment tends not to work. So by and large, surgery is the mainstay of treatment. And we've really break that up into two strategies, reparative, which has been the traditional microfracture, um, may see an AMIC fall into that bracket, and then the replacement strategies, Dr. Kennedy described his OATS procedures. There are other uh, substances that are out there that are used, be it uh, microionized or particulate type cartilage, but I want to talk a little bit about Cartamax. So this is a product that uh, I've only been using over the last year. I've done approximately seven cases with it so far, and I'm going to highlight a few of them here for you today. Uh, Cardamax is from MTF Biologics and the, the product is actually frozen, stuck in the freezer and has a shelf life of about two years. So we now keep two of these on standby in our freezer at NYU for if a uh, case comes up that we have an unexpected lesion uh, that's larger than 10 millimeters that we want to address uh, with a different, uh, additional product, we can have the ability to use this. And I think of it a little bit like Trinity. We often use Trinity bone and we talk about the three features for, for bone uh, graft being osteogenic, uh, osteoinductive, and osteoconductive, uh, and I think Cardamax is somewhat similar to that. It's chondrogenic in that it does contain viable chondrocytes. It's chondroinductive as it does have growth factors as well as the proteoglycans, and the type 2 collagen fibers within the matrix help make this a chondroconductive type product. But what I absolutely love about it is that it's a really well-defined workable putty. So if I'm doing an open procedure, and by and large I've only used this so far in open cases, I'm really thrilled with how I can work it, how I can mold it to fit the exact contour of the talus that I'm working with. Uh, and it stays in place. It doesn't need any fiber and glue to hold it. It stays where it is. I place the ankle through range of motion and it does not move. I sometimes worry if I'm doing another product arthroscopically or even an open, open procedure and I hold it with fiber and glue, I cycle that ankle through range of motion. That graft is somewhere stuck either in the posterior recess but not where it's meant to be. So I always have had some reservation about using uh, fiber and glue to try, to try and hold some other products in place. So what is it? Um, the Cardamax uh, contains shavings from a femoral condyle uh, from patients, uh, donors that are under the age of 35 and they harvest them uh, within three days of passing. Now, MTF has developed a very well-defined process to get uh, fibers that are really of a certain size and shape that do allow the cells to migrate within its uh, matrix. As top of the, on top of the fibers, then it also has milled the cartilage to provide the viable chondrocytes also with a smaller amount of matrix as well. And then these two get combined within the uh, fiber scaffold to produce ultimately a high line cartilage. Now that's been shown in the animal model. We yet to have see how that translates into actual patients. To briefly discuss how it's prepared, this is done typically on the side table by the uh, scrub tech. You take it out of the packet, you thaw it, 
Then you sort of strain all the preservation liquid, rinse it with saline, and then, uh, then drain the saline. Now you have to really make sure that this is super duper dry. It has to be really dry so when you add uh, the cartilage um, matrix to it, it becomes a very well-defined workable potty. If it's not dried enough, it becomes more like a sludge and does not stay exactly where it's meant to be. So it's key to get this super dry. So I just want to highlight a couple of my uh, cases experiences so far. So the first case was a young 16 year old lad who uh, has had a significant injury in October of 2022 playing basketball. He went to the local urgent care, had x-rays done. He then interestingly had an, an MRI done acutely within a week or so of his injury, which did unsurprisingly show he had a uh, tear of his ATFL. Um, but he also had a fairly impressive uh, lateral osteochondral lesion and uh, ultimately was treated conservatively. Now, what you don't really see here is the damage to the lateral aspect of the Taylor Dome. But the MRI shows otherwise. And this was the acute MRI done within a week or so of the injury, which does show the irregularity of the cortex at the lateral aspect of the tail is, as well as this significant trauma uh, and almost like cyst formation acutely uh, within the uh, cancellous bone of that lateral aspect of the dome. He went on to have conservative treatment, but he still had a lot of pain felt unstable, he was a big lad and just couldn't get back to any activities at all, so he came my way. Uh, I referred him for a repeat MRI scan just to see the state of affairs and we planned for surgery, and this was the first case I performed using Cardamax, uh, because I planned to open him anyway. I was going to repair his lateral ligament complex, he was grossly unstable in the office, and this is what we saw on the repeat scan. A very unhappy looking tail, a significant bone marrow edema, the little laser pointer doesn't work, but in that central image, you can see the loss of cartilage at that area, the loss of signal within it. And this is what we find at the time of surgery. So somebody asked a question earlier on, how do they address lateral uh, tailor dome osteochondral lesions? Uh, I routinely uh, will take down the lateral capsule ligamentous complex, use a wire distractor to open it up, and I can get pretty much complete access if I really pull this forward to the whole uh, lateral tailor dome. Um, and then I typically do a standard brush from type repair, but you can see this lesion was just over uh, 10 uh, millimeters. It was completely loose and there was a lack of bone quality deep to that cartilage layer as the image shows on the right hand side. So once we took out the, the uh, um, lesion, measured almost uh, 12 millimeters A to P. So I took some cancellous bone graft from the calcaneus bone, packed it as best I could. Didn't get a perfect contour because it's hard to get a perfect contour of the tillus using cancellous autograft. The cartilage layer is barely a millimeter in thickness, so I wanted to leave enough space to get you know, cartilage to sit into that. But, but this was the first case where I used it, and I was really impressed with how easy it was to work this putty to fit the talus and contour it to what I wanted. I then cycled the ankle joint through range of motion, and it stayed in place. It didn't move away. It did not need any fibrin glue to hold it. And this was, in my mind, a game changer for me for confidence to use a allograft type material. Because traditionally, I would have probably set, set the patient off, I might have tried some grafts, maybe some of the uh, microionized cartilage and sort of had in my head, I'll be back to doing oats in a few years time. And again, so in the final result, this is the little uh, freer elevator just molding this into the shape. And I really was sort of the contour that we got. Uh, so at four months, this is his x-rays, there has been adequate incorporation of the bone in that area. And we then got an MRI, and you can see at the MRI scan, not perfect bone um, shape, but the overall signal from the cartilage is pretty darn good. Now, I plan to get T2 mapping. It wasn't performed, so I cannot assess how this cartilage appears compared to the native cartilage. But overall, significant improvement in the bone uh, marrow edema. This kid's a big guy. He's walking on it. He's started to get back to sports at six months. And with him loading it fully, um, it's, he's pain-free, the cartilage is doing what it's doing, and uh, fingers crossed this will last uh, for a long, long time. So the second case was another young lad. These guys are very active, and uh, he was injured playing soccer. He, he thought it was a simple ankle sprain, ignored it for a period of time, but after eight weeks, he uh, just had persistent discomfort. He couldn't play the way that he needed to and his primary care referred him for an x-ray which showed this uh, traumatic osteochondral fracture involving the lateral shoulder. Again, this is another lateral lesion. 
Um, so we came my way, we got a CT scan, which shows there was no evidence of any bone healing in this whatsoever. So I took him to surgery, I put a camera in first, and you could see that the probe just fell into that abnormal fracture site, the defect that was uh, what we saw. We opened them up once again laterally, did the same technique, took down the lateral um, tissues, and the central image shows the uh, fracture, as, as we see there, with bone loss and cartilage trauma. So I basically uh, took some Consalis autographed, once again, packed the bone layer, and use the Cardamax to f cover the top of it. This is some, I use a nanoscope. I use nanoscopes frequently for most of my cases uh, that I do with cartilage, even just for an initial look to see what I'm doing before I go in there. A little bit of reconnaissance, I call it. Uh, and pack that, that in and then lay the Cardamax over it. This one got a little bit moist, so it didn't have the same yellow color as the previous one, but it was holding position. It did not need any fiber and glue. Again, I cycled it through range of motion. The Cardamax stayed where it was meant to be. Um, so it really gives me good confidence in terms of its workability and knowing that it's going to still be there when I uh, send the patient into recovery because sometimes I do wonder where that graft uh, can sometimes be. We got x-rays intraoperatively. I was thrilled with myself, high-fiving. Then at eight weeks, I got a little bit nervous. I thought, is this not healing in? There was certainly some um, osteopenia. Um, but when I brought him back at four months, I totally filled in and he was completely pain-free. So on him, I did encourage to get an MRI scan, which we got, and what I'm thrilled about here is that the signal change in this Cardamax cartilage graft is the same as a native cartilage. That there would suggest that we have formed adequate hyaline type cartilage as opposed to fiber cartilage, but it is only at months. Time will tell whether this will be differentiate um, or whether it will stay as it's, as it's meant to do. But He's back, he's back skiing over these uh, holidays. He's doing extremely well, and uh, fingers crossed it will hold up long term. But again, I need to get more follow-up data, which we plan to do in another uh, few months. The final case I want to present is a young lad, uh, 27 years of age, who's a history of chronic ankle instability. He had surgery done previously with an internal brace and did really well initially, but re-injured it at a vacation when he rolled his ankle on some cobblestones. Uh, when I saw him, he was grossly unstable, completely lax in the ankle. He was extremely swollen. I didn't know was there an infection going on here, what else was going on. So we did a complete workup with him. You can see at the tail, it's once again laterally. So, so far, these have all been lateral lesions. There was a little bit of exostosis of the bone of that lateral aspect of the tailor dome. I wasn't sure what was going on. We got MRI, which shows in the lateral ankle this massive soft tissue response, a large ankle joint effusion. And the CT scan showed significant bone loss as a result of the bone anchors that were holding the internal brace in position. So clearly his body was not responding well to this uh, product. Inflammatory markers were normal. So I suspected that there may have been some reaction to the uh, screws that hold the internal brace in position. The osteochondral lesion, was this a new thing? What was this uh, like before his prior surgery? I just don't know. So we planned everything on standby, and I did plan to have the Cartamax as well to address the cartilage defect. So whenever we opened them up, you can see significant bone loss due to the uh, destructive uh, osteolytic process as a reaction from the screws. So I used bone, um, Kinsella's bone uh, allograft, impacted that in, I took some BMAC to augment it with the bone chips to help hopefully improve their integration within his native bone. You can sort of see at the image on the left the irregularity of that Taylor cartilage. On the right hand side, I then uh, took away the abnormal cartilage. It was extremely thin, it really wasn't viable at all. And I sort of morselized or chipped off some of that dense sclerotic prominence that was there back to the more of a normal Consalis type bone. Central image shows where I started to put some graft into it, but this again on the right hand side um, was the artistry, so to speak, of being a surgeon, I tried to really mold this Cartamax putty into the native contour of the patient's own biology. And then once again, I cycled the angle to range of motion to help almost contour this uh, Cartamax into what it needs to be, the actual patient's own anatomic contour. And this was the intraoperative image. In this case, I used um, anchors to hold it back in place. There is some irregularity because as good as I think I am, I'm never going to be able to get that exact contour of the uh, Taylor Dome unless I were to take an osteochondral uh, graft. But I want to really build up uh, the amount of structure that's there so that I only need to put on maybe two to three millimeters of thickness of the Cardamax to help it um, contour to the patient's anatomy. 
So at six weeks, uh, this is only a few weeks out, he's completely pain-free, ankle was stable, he's now doing PT, he's rehabbing, and uh, we've got an MRI plan for the end of this month, that'll be a six-month follow-up, and uh, we'll see how he's responding, but uh, so far, so good. I actually think of one more case, so why not, people are gonna hang on to it? Let's let, why not, Let's, we're here. This was another complex case, this was a guy that had a trauma, he fell off a ladder and had medial and lateral osteochondral lesions, had prior surgery, to address them, the medial side was treated with microfracture and biocartilage, but the lateral one was just microfracture by itself. Um, he did well initially, but in August 2021, his pain was getting worse. We got an MRI scan on him. So I'm able to, I think, compare uh, the MRIs if they're coming up for me. This was his initial MRI before he had any surgery. This was after his uh, injury. Large bone edema at the medial tailor dome, smaller amount laterally. This is after his surgery, when he had the microfracture biocartilage, and he did extremely well. Bone marrow response was a lot less, but you can see on the lateral aspect, a little signal change there in a the small cystic area. Keep an eye on that because it got progressively worse. He tried cortisone shots, he didn't want surgery, things were just getting worse and worse and worse until ultimately in March of last year, he said, I gotta do something about this stock, I gotta get surgery, this just is not uh, working for me. So look at that lateral aspect of the dome, significantly worse, but also it's long. It's almost two centimeters front to back. It is quite narrow, but there's a large cystic component to it as well, large bone bruising. The medial aspect was also starting to deteriorate. So this uh, was the, really I opened this guy up through incisions anteromedial and anterolateral. Um, you can see with the, by the biocartilage, on the medial aspect just had not taken, it was very soft, it was not adherent, it didn't integrate at all with the native cartilage. So we took it out, did a couple of small holes into it and applied our um, Cardamax uh, to the medial uh, aspect of the dome. And then I opened up laterally and this was a challenge because it was a long lesion all the way front to back. And even with, you can see my wire distractor at the bottom image there in the fibula, even maximally distracted, it was long, but it was narrow, and it involved the whole of the shoulder. And we know that shoulder lesions don't fare well long term. And in this case, I just carefully um, decorticated the more posterior aspect, a couple of holes laterally, but I wanted to try and preserve that subchondral plate as much as we could. And I was able to mold the cardamax into what I felt, again, the native cartilage would be. Again, I cycle the angle through range of motion. It stays where it is, but it helps mold the cartilage graft into the native anatomy of the Taylor Dome. Um, so he's early post-op, he's only a couple of months out, but already he's fully weight-bearing and his pain that he had prior to surgery has completely resolved. Given that cartilage is a neural, we gotta assume the pain is predominantly from the bone, and therefore this is a good indicator that the cartilage graft is holding. But again, early days, um, and hopefully it will uh, pan out into more longer-term successful results, but so far I'm really delighted with this. I've only used this so far in open procedures, um, and I find it's a very easy workable putty that does not need fibrin glue, because my concern about the fibrin glue, as I've said, is that sometimes that can catch and just pull off the graft in, in one little uh, file swoop. Um, but the key is to make sure the graft is really dry, that the working environment is very dry for this to hold position. Uh, but again, my results are early. I've only done a few so far, but I'm really pleased with it, and this certainly is something that I've kept in the freezer to use longer term.